My name is Sydney Brannick, and I am a biology PhD student with dual appointment at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History and Case Western Reserve University. So while working on a research project looking at praying mantises from mainland Africa in Madagascar, Dr. Gavin Svensson, who is my PhD advisor and co-author, were looking at specimens from the Natural History Museum of Paris, France. So while investigating a particular specimen, I happened to notice that it featured a unique combination of characters that I hadn't observed on other specimens within this group. The name of the new species is Corneucalis masaolensis. Corneucalis, translated from the Latin, means horned neck, and masaolensis is named for the region um, in northern Madagascar from where this specimen was collected. This is a leaf-dwelling specimen from the Eridopterygidae family and members of this family have very particular features. This specimen featured conical, somewhat flattened compound eyes that had projections that came off of the neck plates that were horn-like and blunted. Also features four leg spines, which are procumbent or a little bit flattened. And it also featured unique structures on the genitalia that I had not observed in other species up to this point. So tropodomantini are relatively small mantises. They tend to dwell on leaves, bark and on the ground, and they feature morphological characteristics and coloration that helps them to blend in with their environment. I investigated 16 different genera using specimens from the Natural History Museum of Paris, France, the Natural History Museum of Vienna, Austria, and the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. I also compared descriptions of species and genera in uh, taxonomic literature. To investigate this specimen, I first dissected the genitalia using extra fine scissors which are actually used for human eye surgery, which many uh, entomologists keep in their labs for insect dissection. Um, so once the genitalia were isolated, I looked at the structures using a stereo microscope, and we described the specimen as a new genus and a new species based on its unique combination of characters, which are not present on any other known mantises. Working with Dr. Svensson, who is a leading expert in praying mantis systematics, has provided me with the support and training necessary to thoroughly investigate praying mantis morphology and taxonomy. Furthermore, the museum features the largest praying mantis collection in the world. With that, museum collections are incredibly important because they essentially serve as biological libraries where instead of books, they are filled with specimens. And this enables scientists to document biodiversity as well as preserve specimens for future research. Research such as this new genus, new species description is important because it contributes to the known biodiversity of the planet. And it enables scientists to map out the evolutionary relationships and the morphological relationships of praying mantises specifically and organisms in general.